Ah, the Toronto streetcar. One of the few places in Canada to still have a streetcar. But the model of the streetcar known as the CLRV, which has been in Toronto since the 1970s, was retired on December 29th, 2019. This is because the new CEO, Rick Leary, was in favor of the new Flexity Outlook streetcars. Now most people would agree that they are sad that the CLRV is gone because it truly represented Toronto and stayed through so many changes. But people would also argue that the Flexi brought some long needed and welcome changes. But things are not always as they seem. After various derailments, not meeting original mileage expectations, a brake problem that caused the Queen line to go down, and 52 out of 204 flexities needing various repairs and or upgrades, I think it's finally time someone brings this to everyone's attention. Let's first talk about the most simple part, the outside. Now I noticed from experience, I want to see if just by looking at these streetcars, if you can infer something. See it? No? Well of course the new streetcar has a different design and is much larger, but just look how the bodywork looks. On the new streetcar, it's very shiny. You know why this is? And it's see, look at how shiny it is. That means it's made of plastic, which is not good. That's right. The majority of the body is made out of cheap metal and plastic. This means that the vehicle is much less durable and can be broken much easier, which is another huge problem in the safety scheme of things. On the CLRV, the body is made out of strong metal and the fleet number is also clearly displayed inside the vehicle in the front. The new streetcar was made much larger so it could fit more passengers. This means it takes up more space on the road, but it is a small advantage. If the vehicle were made out of better material, made to last, and, and made it safer, it could have been great. The fleet number should also be displayed inside the vehicle so people can use it to, re use it to report any significant events easier. Okay, I see the big difference with the new one. I don't know, it really doesn't have the vision of a streetcar to me. The CLRV has stairs to enter, which makes it unfortunately impossible for wheelchair access unlike the Flexity. The Flexity has a low floor that lowers similar to buses so wheelchairs can get into the vehicle. This is a big improvement for people in wheelchairs or with accessibility issues. The CLRV is easy to board. There's a convenient presto machine, but moreover, a driver who you can easily talk to or ask questions and a fair collection box to pay in cash, tokens, or tickets. Unlike the Flexity, which only has a Presto machine, the driver is located in a sealed off area and the fare collection box is replaced with a machine in the middle car. It's strange that the driver is in an isolated area away from the vehicle. What happens if a fight breaks out or something happens inside the streetcar? Even if the driver notices it, even if the driver notices it, by the time they get out, the people would probably already stop or a fight would have already been well underway. The cash machine is inconvenient, takes a long time, and is harder to use, as well as I'm confused if it even accepts tickets. And the driver being sealed away doesn't allow for personal interaction or the ability to ask for assistance. The Flexity should have kept the driver where people could interact with them and ask for assistance. The fare system should have been kept for people who want to use cash, tickets, and tokens. This could have made the vehicle much more successful. We're the technology. The CLRV has a relatively loud engine, as well as a very clear clicking and buzzing while it's running. I've seen many argue that they like how much quieter the new Flexity streetcars are. I used to like the idea too, but I've changed my mind and realized it's actually a very bad change. I feel the quiet engine on these new vehicles creates a safety risk, as someone might not be able to hear it coming if they can't see it. How about the audible warnings? The Flexity features a fake sound generated bell and a different horn. The sound generated bell has already been made fun of by many, even coining the name Cheap Gong Gong. But why I think the sound generated bell fails is the same reason the quiet engine fails. It's just not loud enough. I can play a clear comparison of the two. I think that point alone shows that the real bell on the CLRV is much safer simply because it is louder and can be heard from further away. Another issue is the horn. The horn on the CLRV is unique. 
What I mean by that is that it sounds like a different vehicle. But how about the horn on the Flex City? Yeah. It sounds like a car horn. This can be a fair warning, but could also be confusing to other drivers. The stop request sound is not very good in my opinion. I'm not sure if this particular sound is caused by someone pressing a button to open the doors or just when the doors are open suddenly, but above the regular ding, sometimes there's a terrible sounding beeping sound. Receive it. it sounds like a smoke detector or some loud alarm, and it gets really annoying when it keeps going off. Making the vehicle a bit louder, making the sounds on the new on the inside less obtrusive, and having a louder physical bell could have improved this new vehicle a lot. The stop request rope on the CLRV is easy to access from anywhere in the vehicle. On the Flexity, there is no stop request rope, and only buttons on the poles. Why this is important is because on the CLRV, it is easy to, easier to request a stop from anywhere in the vehicle, but in the Flexity, there's only buttons in certain portions of the vehicle, making it more challenging. It would have been nice if they kept the rope. The CLRV has seats positioned in a way where most face to the front of the vehicle and are placed on the floor level. On the Flexity, most of the seats face each other, and some of them can even have platforms you need to step on, up on to access the seats. As you can see with the seats that face each other, it forces you to look under at other people. But this also eliminates a fair bit of legroom, which makes me feel uncomfortable. And the seats themselves? They're nothing like the red seats on a CLRV, which are pretty comfortable and look aesthetically nice. But the flex seats, though not uncomfortable, look goofy and feel cramped. With such a large vehicle, making the seats face each other is an unnecessary sacrifice to fit more passengers. The seats could have kept the same look and had no need to face each other and could still hold still hold significantly more passengers. The window on the CLRV is nice and easy to look out of if you want to. The window on the CLRV can be open to cool down the vehicle if need be. On the Flexity, the window is covered by this ugly sheet, which makes it hard to look out of. It is made to block the sun. This can also make it hard to see outside the vehicle if you're looking to stop somewhere near a store, for example. But the old streetcar had no issue with sun coming in anyways. Why couldn't they have just tinted a portion of the window, similar to how it's done on windshields? Or just had nothing at all, like the CLRV did? Another concern that I had while I was riding the vehicle, in most of these clips I'm wearing a jacket, but I swear the Flexity felt significantly colder than the CLRV. And now, I, I get it's a bigger vehicle and that means there's more area to heat, but feeling a temperature change between the two vehicles while I have a coat on, it's a bit concerning to me. The Flexity has air conditioning, which makes it nicer to ride in the summertime, as well as reducing the risk of serious health problems such as heat stroke. I feel the heating in the Flexity should be more efficient, and the fact that I could feel this through a jacket really got my attention, but the air conditioning is a step in the right direction. On the CLRV, the ride is smooth, and not very nice, not too bumpy, and it doesn't throw you around like a subway car. On the Flexity, when I first got on, I felt the vehicle threw me around much, with much more of a force comparable to a subway car. Oh yeah, I can see how people would say this feels like it's going to derail. Holy crap. Okay. The vehicle jostles around quite a lot and feels incredibly unstable, like it's going to fall over. Not to mention a really bad rumble. I just want to get shots. From it feels like an earthquake under your seat. I feel like how the past two models did, the Flexi should have had extra improvements for a smoother ride. It would have made it better and would have solved these problems. It would also make people less worried that the vehicle is going to derail or fall over, and it could even possibly make these events less likely, as these streetcars have derailed in the past. Not meeting mileage expectations, derailments, many in need of repairs and upgrades, a terribly rough ride, a bad design, bad auditory warning system, maybe even a death trap. The Flexity is a joke of a vehicle that we are stuck with, and maybe you disagree, but I'm not here to convince you. I'm simply here to get something out that I think everyone in Toronto deserves to hear. When UTDC and SIG worked on the CLRV, 
They went on the path to innovating the Toronto streetcar past the last model. With the smooth ride, great design, strong body, and a vehicle that was built to last, it's no wonder the CLRV caught on. And with the CLRV gone and our streetcar made worse, let's play a nice montage of a great song made during the PCC era to honor these amazing vehicles. I'm a TTC skedaddler, got a socket to my big red rattler, got a socket to my big red rattler. I've been a streetcar driver now about 11 years, and I know the old Toronto city well. There's a whole lot of people who wait along the track for the signal from my clanging trolley bell. I'm a TTC skedaddler, get a socket from a big red rattler, get a socket from a big red rattler. Put the pole up on the wire now and open up the switch, it's time to get old rattlers parking through. She's red around the bottom and she's yellow on the top, and I drive her like a driver ought to do. I'm a TTC skedaddler, get a socket from a big red rattler, get a socket from a big red rattler. I love my little wife at home, I love my couple kids, they often take the trolley to the park. They know their daddy's driving the people here and there, but I'll be back again to pick them up at dark. I'm a TTC skedaddler, get a socket from my big red rattler, get a socket from my big red rattler. Don't forget your ticket when I open up the door, kindly make your way along the aisle. I'll drive you down to work and I'll safely bring you back and I'll try to render service with a smile. I'm a TTC skedaddler, get a socket from my big red rattler, get a socket from my big red rattler. I've been a streetcar driver now about 11 years and I know the old Toronto city well. There's a whole lot of people who wait along the track for the signal from my clanging trolley bell. I'm a TTC skedaddler, get a socket from my big red rattler, get a socket from my big red rattler, get a socket from my big red rattler, get a socket from my big red rattler. And that's all. The Flexity is a vehicle that fell short of its expectations. The CRV was so much better to a brighter future with a better vehicle hopefully. But for now, we're stuck with a streetcar that has some major flaws. A vehicle Bombardier put little effort into. A vehicle that has a low floor and meets low expectations. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Good, day. good, good luck on your new ones. <laughs> yeah, I need it.